Good day, this is the Given from TechnoDrive. Welcome to our channel again. Uh, today we've got this 5.5 kilowatt inverter. It's an eco brand inverter. So the problem on this inverter is error 9. When you switch on the inverter, the inverter doesn't give out a 230 in output. So the inverter just gives an alarm with no output. You can see it's a 5.5 kilowatt. Let's switch it on so that you can see what happens. I've switched it on from the switch underneath. Just waiting for it. There it gives a zero nine with a red light. So this zero nine it tells you that the inverter has got a problem inside. I'm going to show you where is the problem from another board, then you can understand. Let's switch it off. Okay, here I've got the sample board so that you can see where does the error 9 come from. You see on the board, you've got this uh, input MOSFET there. These MOSFETs are connected to this uh, transformer. So the, functions of, the function of all those MOSFETs is to change the battery voltage. You've got the 48 volts there. And then this MOSFET will switch at a high frequency. So when it switches on a high frequency, you've got the transformer there. That frequency will cause the voltage to be doubled or tripled on the other secondary stage. So what's going to happen is 48 volts will be switched by the MOSFET to high voltage. So on these two big capacitors, you will have uh, 400 to 500 volts. You've got 48 volts, it's been switched by the MOSFET uh, connected to this transformer. And then there you've got your two uh, smoothing cap so that the, the voltage will be stable. So you've got 400 volts. If you can look there, you can see on the capacitor there, C500V. Uh, let me put it close. You can see there you've got 500 V. So this is a high voltage capacitor. Whereas this side, it's a low voltage. Normally it's around 80 volts capacitors. So these are low voltage capacitors. So what happens is, if the transformer is trying to switch and it doesn't reach 500 volts for a certain seconds, then you're gonna have an error 09. Why does it show? Error 09 means that the DC bus was not enough. So when the inverter tries to switch the 48 volts to 400 volts, it couldn't do that on a certain seconds. Actually, even one second, it's, it's calculated there. Then if it doesn't reach that 500 uh, volts, you will have error 09. So what's the cause? Is because you see on on this side you've got their your output MOSFET uh, they are called IGBTs so these MOSFET are bigger ones you see those bigger MOSFETs those are output MOSFETs so what happens is these MOSFETs they fail so if this MOSFET fail even if the inverter tries to um, convert the voltage from 48 volts to 500 volts, there will be a short on the DC bus. So the DC bus is these two caps here. You can see on these two caps. So once, once you see a short here, you, you will have an error 09. Okay, so what we do, we have to replace this MOSFET, which are the bigger MOSFET. You can see there, those are the bigger ones. So we have to change these MOSFETs and the optocouplers. You must remember these MOSFETs, you can see these three pins, 
are connected directly. Uh, let's check this one. You see there, with the white line there, it goes to the optocoupler. And also there are some SMD components there. So what's, happen what's happening is once you change all these MOSFET, you have to change all these components there and the optocouplers so that um, you, you, you've got a quality job. Because now if you don't change this, the inverter will fail in a very short space because those MOSFET are connected. So if there's a short, obviously this will be damaged. So that's what caused error 09. So we are going to fix that inverter. Then we're going to come back. And then you will see. So sometimes you'll find that the input MOSFET, you see these ones, the inverter can give you error 9. Uh, and you find that these MOSFET also, you need to change them. Why? Because when sometimes when the, the, there's high voltage from your house, it will damage the MOSFET. Then there will be a voltage that's going to be transferred back to the MOSFET. So if you've got, let's say maybe you've got a, a 600 volt spike, then that 600 volts will be amplified to the MOSFET because you've got what? You've got a transformer there. So if you've got a high voltage there, this transformer will change the voltage, then it's going to damage the MOSFET. So you're going to have to change the MOSFET as well. So we have to check that as well, if the MOSFET are all not damaged. So we're going to fix that inverter, and then we can sort out this error 09. Okay, we are now done with the repairs. Uh, the problem was on the input and output stage. Uh, we are going to test it now. You can see the inverter doesn't even take time. So you've got 230 out there. So it's no longer giving that error 9. So what was the problem? The problem was on the power board, the power board that I showed you before. So we're now done with the repairs and the, the inverter is working 100%. So it's just a matter of testing, making sure that all the components are okay on the power board. And then we're done with it. Thank you. Yeah, since we are done with the repairs, we are now going to test all the functions of the inverter. Uh, you can see on the inverter, we've got the PV in, we've got the output, we've got the SCOM line. So we have to test all those things and also we have a battery terminals there. Okay. Uh, right now, I've only have got the battery connected, but you can see the inverter is already giving output and the output is going to the light there okay so this is the output there so the inverter is pushing output uh, we're gonna run it under more load uh, let's see how much current we how much power we're pulling you can see that the load is on uh, 0 0.4 va it's almost like zero percent okay let's switch on the output See now we we've got two KVA. So we are running it under load now. It's thirty-five percent. So the inverter is running with the with the load. Okay, now we are going to You can see that the load is connected to this plug. So when I switch on the load, that's where I switch on there. This is a 1.5 kilowatt load. Okay, I'm gonna switch off now, you'll see. Yeah, that now is dropping. So we're no longer running under load. Okay, let's test the PV. You can see that the sign there for the PV is off. Let's switch on. There you go, you've got the PV in now. There's the PV sign.
can see the batteries now charging from the PV. Okay, let's check the PV voltage. You can see we have 164 volts, uh, 160 volts PV voltage. You can see there. So the inverter is working on PV. So the next step to, is to check the SCOM line if the inverter accepts the SCOM. You can see that we've got zero volts there. Let's switch on the SCOM line. I'm going to switch on the SCOM line now. You can see the inverter is allowing SCOM as well. It's going to go to bypass now. You can see now it's on bypass. So we've tested all the functions on this echo inverter. PV is okay. SCOM is okay. Battery is running and the load is running. So the inverter is 100% and tested. Thank you.